Now to understand the deep palmar arch, we'll need to talk a little about the course of the radial artery. So we do remember that in the forearm, the radial artery ended as it entered the anatomical snuff box. So what happens next? So that's a story we need to know. The radial artery in the hand, the course of it and what branches it gives. Once it enters the dorsum of the hand, it passes through the anatomical snuff box and right over here, it gives two branches. Two branches radial artery give are number one to supply basically these two fingers and the dorsum of the hand, supply them with blood. The first branch it gives is to the lateral half of the thumb. It gives a branch for the lateral half of the thumb. And the second branch it gives is known as the first dorsal metacarpal artery, which basically splits into two. One goes here and one division goes to the lateral portion of the index finger posteriorly or on the dorsum. So the radial artery has supplied about one and a half fingers with arterial supply posteriorly or in the dorsum. And once it gives the lateral half of the thumb branch and the first dorsal metacarpal artery, it enters the first interosseous space. Now, what's the first interosseous space? It is space between two metacarpal bones, the one first and second metacarpal bone. This is the first interosseous space and it enters the front of the palm as it penetrates the first interosseous space. And from here starts another story. As you guys remember, there were no, there was no supply to the thumb and the lateral part of the index finger. And now this is the job for the radial artery. It gives two branches. The first, it gives the princeps pollicis artery. This pollicis, we all know the anatomical name for the thumb. Princeps pollicis artery is its first branch in the palm. This supplies the thumb completely. It supplies the thumb. Then it gives another branch called the radialis indices artery. Red represents the radial artery. So it is giving the second branch. First was princeps pollicis. Then it gives the radialis indices artery. Radialis indices. The name says it. Indices meaning anatomical name for the index finger. Radialis meaning the lateral border. So the lateral part of the index finger is finally supplied by the branch of radial artery called the radialis indices. And the thumb is supplied by the princeps pollicis. After it is done giving these two branches, now starts the story of the deep palmar arch. So, got to make a hand again. The radial artery has entered. Let's do it red again. It has entered the, after the first, first interosseous spate, it has entered the palm. It first gives a branch to princeps pollicis and then it gives branch called the radialis indices. After this, what happens? The radial artery gives off a superficial branch, as I mentioned earlier, to the to complete the superficial palmar arch, the superficial branch is given and itself it continues as the deep palmar branch, which is the radial artery's termination. It continues as the deep palmar branch and this continuation forms the deep palmar arch. The deep palmar arch, now this is more deep, it lies about close to the fourth layer of your intrinsic muscles and this arch is completed on the medial side by, at least on the base of the fifth metacarpal, it is completed by the deep branch of ulnar artery that if you remember, the ulnar artery gave a deep branch earlier. This is that deep branch that will medially join with the deep, deep palmar arch or the radial deep branch to complete the deep palmar arch. Deep palmar arch basically lies on the proximal part of the shaft of the metacarpal bones. So you can say if this is the superficial palmar arch, then the deep palmar arch is a little lower than this. This is the deep palmar arch. So an overview I just want to give you that the ulnar and radial arteries are basically forming the arches. The ulnar artery of the hand has a superficial branch and it has a deep branch. We are talking about the ulnar artery. And all the radial artery of your hand is having superficial branch and it is continuing as a deep branch. So both are giving a superficial and a deep branch. However, uh, the superficial branches are taking part in the formation of superficial palmar arch and the deep branches are taking part in the formation of deep palmar arch. Also of note is that 
The superficial palmar arch is beginning or formed by the superficial branch of the ulnar artery and it is joined by the superficial branch of the radial artery. But the deep palmar arch is formed by the radial arteries deep branch. So you can say there is a difference here. The superficial arch is being formed by the ulnar artery and the deep palmar arch is being formed by the radial artery. So if that is clear, let's finally talk about the branches of the deep palmar arch. The deep palmar arch is basically obviously giving the palmar metacarpal arteries that I mentioned earlier. These will join the common digital arteries, the palmar metacarpal arteries. And finally, it gives in, from its concavity, it gives a recurrent branch that joins the carpal area the carpal arches. Finally, it gives and also it gives the perforating digital arteries that perforate the interosseous spaces, the second, third and fourth interosseous spaces and go behind in the dorsum of the hand to basically connect with the or communicate with the dorsal metacarpal arteries that we'll study in the back of the hand. So the three branches of the deep palmar arch are the palmar metacarpal arteries and the perforating digital arteries and finally the uh, concavity is giving the recurrent branch that goes into the carpal area to form palmar carpal arches. Thank you so much for watching. That is all for the palmar arches.